All right, for my animated storyboard, here are my nine frames. I just cleaned it up to the basics. So I'm not going to add any extra frames here. I have my timing. It's all in the last video how I set that up. Now to save it, first I'm going to save it as my animatic file, right? So remember, don't overwrite your storyboard that you sketched. Change its name to the animatic, then save it as a PSD. I'm saving it into my folder, right? Next, how do you get it so you can post an animation online to Canvas? What you're going to do is you're not going to click on the hamburger and use anything here. If we wanted to save it as a movie file, like if you really like your animatic and you want it in, in millions of pixels resolution, what you would have to do is change it in this bottom left-hand corner to convert it from a frame timeline to a video timeline. It's a very basic video timeline. <laughs> And then you click on the, the options, and then you would say, render video. And this is easy to do because this is pretty basic, like nine frames. And then you just use all the defaults. You'll notice this isn't an exact square because I just drew it. I didn't lock it to a square. So it's 678 pixels by 651. And I say render, and it's going to give me I believe an MP4 file with all the defaults. So I can put that up to YouTube. I could do what I wanted with that. The problem is if I post an MP4 file to Canvas, right? And then you click to play it, it's only gonna play through once. And we want it to kind of play through a lot. Otherwise it's only gonna last like three seconds, right? So GIF files are a way more basic file type than a movie file. So if you look at the downloads, if I render it as a full video, this is what it looks like. And it will play through for exactly three seconds, nine frames at 0.3 or close to three seconds. And then to get it to keep playing through, I'd have to set my video player to loop. And that's a pain. But you'll see the quality of all the edges, everything's clean. Right? And you'll have the option to do that. But in order to post it for this class and make it a GIF animation, not an MP4, we have to do this. We have to use old school Photoshop tools. So I'm going to take this back, convert it back to what you guys have, just a frame by frame animation. And then I'm going to go to File. And I'm not going to save it. Instead, for the first time ever in this class, I'm going to export it. And I'm going to export saying save for web parentheses legacy <laughs> so it's like every way i can tell you this is an old school way of doing it and i hope they never get rid of this because it would upset a lot of people so i don't think they will but when you say that save for web legacy it brings up your gif options and these are the default gif options to save with 256 colors that's the maximum but you can always limit it and save more memory to support transparency, just like a PNG. So your animations, your GIFs do not need to fill a rectangle. They can be like animated icons, just in general when you're making GIFs. Um, and then I can play it and see how it works being reduced to just these 256 pixels. Because I just sketched it in gray and black, that shouldn't cause too much trouble, right? It's still at the same resolution. It's just limited in color. So now I hit save if that looks good to me. And it will save to my downloads as a GIF file, a graphic interchange format, a GIF file. Now here are some of the oddities of GIF files. You can see in my downloads, I have the MP4 and I have now the GIF. If I just double click on the GIF on a Mac, it will open up in preview, just like any image file. But it won't open up just one image. It will open up the whole stack. So this is basically the flipbook. But I have to use the arrow to go through it. The beauty of an animated script GIF, which you can only save through doing export and save for web legacy, is it builds in the timing into it. But it can only be viewed through a web browser. So if you right click and you say open with, 
and then you actually choose a web browser. And for some reason, I always feel bad for Safari because I never use it. So I use Safari for this and this alone. So I open it with Safari. And sure enough, it's there. And its timing might be even a little bit faster than what you see in Photoshop because Photoshop has to have the processing time to show you what it's doing, whereas this is fully locked in. So this is truly 0.3 seconds for each frame. And if I wanted to, I could do 0.32 seconds for each frame and slow it down just a tiny bit. OK, that is the file, mark it with orange, that I save to my folder. I'll actually save both of them. But that's the one I can put to Canvas. It won't accept the other file formats. You could upload your MP4 video, but it's not nearly as user friendly, right? So that's what, not what I want you to do. Oh, and the other thing about the GIF is that if I save this just under File, Save As, or Save a Copy, like I would for a JPEG or a PNG, you'll notice that GIF is one of the options. But you do not do that for this, because if I do that, I'm going to give it a different name, otherwise it will overwrite my animation file. I'll show you how to make mistakes. It will save it, but because it's not under the animation script options, where is it? When I open it, it will just be this stack. It will have all the information, but when I open it in a browser, I put it to Canvas. Is that the right one? Hey, they didn't used to work. So maybe that works, but I wouldn't. Never used to. It would always flatten it, and it would just, it wouldn't give the animation script. So always do export for save for web legacy. And if they made an improvement in how they saved that, because that happened every semester, someone would save it as a GIF, and it would just be like just a bad still image. And that's not what you want. But I'm glad. They've made a change for the better, just saving within Photoshop. But this is, I wanted to show you that to remind you, when you search for GIF files, it doesn't mean they're animated. It's just a way of reducing file image size. A lot of my earliest cartoons, uh, which were done in the early 90s and put on my website, those are GIF images, just because I haven't gone in and converted them to JPEGs or PNGs, because that was the most common type of image in the early internet, right? All right, so once you've got that, you can post it to Canvas if you want. And you post it just like any other still image, except that it will be animated because it's got the animation script in it, which is a really unique and fun feature. You don't need any special program to play a GIF. That's because they take up so little memory because they're limited to only 256 colors. Okay, now armed with this, we're ready to set up for our finished animation. So, so as a metaphor for how we're going to do our frame animation, building them up with our raster images, our compositing, I'm going to use uh, stop motion animation as a metaphor, okay? Because there's lots of ways to create sequential images, use character and setting, and create the illusion of movement. But this, to me, is the most appropriate metaphor. So it's a movie that I'm sure you're all aware of. And it's called Nightmare Before Christmas. We're getting into Halloween season. The McNay Museum in San Antonio often uh, has a collection of these maquettes and these sets. And they're not doing it this year. They're doing a, a costume display of Broadway wicked costumes which looks to be pretty cool. But in the next few years, they'll put on this display again if you want to see them. And it's intense to see what work goes into creating a stop motion film. Because just like you created your landscapes, they work 
to create real like little miniature stage versions of each scene and then they create individual characters that they have to place individually into each scene and then change just a little bit for each frame and then how do they get the frame they snap a photo of it right so to set up a shot like this you have a camera locked on a tripod you have your set built you have it lit and then you have your little wireframe maquettes your characters that each individually have different heads that you can swap in and in and out to change their expressions or if they're speaking dialogue and it's a sequence of still images just like a flipbook right once they've set it up they remove them their physical bodies from the frame they take the picture they make sure they have the picture then they go back and they do the next one and it takes them days and days and days just to do seconds of film right at 24 frames per second so we're going to build two files and we're going to lock them into perfect squares so i'm going to take this animatic and i'm going to change its image size and for the first time in this class we're going to break the chain link between the width and height and we're going to make both of these a solid eight inches so it doesn't matter what it was originally we're going to stretch it to be a, an exact eight by eight inches we're going to change its resolution to be 100 pixels per inch we've never done that before that's just a little bit better than standard screen resolution which is 72. So you should have a, an image that has a pixel dimension of 800 pixels by 800 pixels. It's eight inches by eight inches by 100 pixels per inch. This will allow us to do up to 50 frames and still keep it around five megabytes as a GIF. Does that make sense? If we did it at a higher resolution, not only would it take a lot longer to process, but let's say we did it at 300 pixels per inch at eight by eight, then it would be like multiple gigs as a file and it's not necessary because we're not printing you don't print an animation right instead you display it on a screen so if you say okay that's going to stretch our pixels to be a perfect circle and because we digitally drew it it shouldn't really change the the clarity all that much when you digitally create pixels it does a pretty good job extrapolating them up or down now i'm going to drag all my frames to the trash i'm going to try to be careful and not ever say delete because i don't want to delete the layers so i just select all those frames and i drag them to the trash can and then i can close my timeline window go to window and uncheck timeline so basically and I can get rid of, I can delete my gray and I can delete my background layer. And now what I have are my keyframes. And I'm going to mark those all with a color. I'm going to make them purple for Nightmare Before Christmas. So these are my purple keyframes. These are my sketches for my purple keyframes. This I'm going to say file save as a new name. I don't know why I had the crop tool on. It's going to be assignment three assets, A S S E T S, as a PSD file. The assets are like the uh, suitcases, like the treasure chest that they kept all of the different various expressions in, all of the different costumes all of the different background models that went to make the sets it's going to be all the the puppetry and toys and set design pieces that you play with for your animation so my assets i'm going to start building them up with my stuff from my projects right my creature is going to be asset i might build a, a second jaw or another head for my creature different stages of development 
I'm just going to put all of those layers into this assets folder. 